So I soaked a cup and a half of navy beans overnight. I'm just going to add them to a pot. Oops. I'm going to cover them with some water. Just until they're about a little bit covered, maybe an inch above the beans. To that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of salt. And don't worry, we're going to rinse this. We just want a little bit of salt in there to boil the beans. Now to get my oven cooking real hot, I gotta open up the bottom. Let more air flow in and it'll get these boiling in no time. So the beans are just about done cooking. And now we have to make our sauce. So what we need to do is get some onion and dice it into many little pieces and where my onion was stored it's actually really cold so the outside is partially frozen now I can sit here and I can dice these onions up or I can use the new tool that my mother gave me so we'll just have to cut them in smaller pieces and do it this way had something like this. This isn't the exact one that I had earlier, but mine broke and I've been missing this. So I'm so happy that I got this. So we have all of our onions chopped into little pieces. We're going to set that aside. Okay. And then in this bowl, I'm going to mix half a cup of brown sugar by the way this is homemade brown sugar super easy to make you just add molasses to some sugar and I have organic um, cane sugar and then I mix this up in my mixer and it's so good you can make it as light or as dark as you want. To this we want to add half a cup of ketchup. So I wanted to make use of this. This is something I made back in, I don't know how well, 2014. I opened it, it's good, the seal was good, it smells good. So I finally, I didn't like it as a ketchup for like dipping fries or something in, but to use as like a base of something, it worked out really, really good. So we need half a cup of ketchup. And it's super thick too. I'm already making a mess. Then we'll need half a cup of dark molasses. One of the locals gave us this jar of their homemade maple syrup. I'm gonna, the recipe calls for half a cup, but I don't add pork to mine, so I'm gonna put three fourths of a cup. 
just because I love this maple syrup. It's so yummy. In this bowl, I also have um, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and it does call for it does call for one tablespoon of dry mustard. I don't have dry mustard, so I use some Dijon mustard. So I'm gonna add, oh, I'm gonna say two and a half tablespoons of oil. So I can already start to hear it sizzle, so that tells me that we need to add our onions. Let's just add a couple, and it is starting to sizzle. I just want to cook these until they're translucent, which only takes a couple minutes on this stove. <laughs> and again, I still have my um, door open and the trap door, I guess. I don't even know what it's called. If you know what this part of the oven is called, let me know. But I have the, the door open so that it gives me high heat. And with trying to keep up with today's temperature, I'm just keeping it open and burning as much wood as we need to today. Okay, so we're just about there. And then we're gonna add all of our deliciousness that we made earlier. And then also the apple cider vinegar and the mustard. It already looks so dark and rich and yummy. And I just want, I guess, to simmer this just for a minute. Get it all nice and warm. And then we'll add our cooked beans. So as you can see, it already looks super yummy. I'm going to pop this in my oven. Now, because it has to be cooked at a low temperature, I'm going to keep my oven door open because we're cooking constantly in here. So I'll leave it open a crack, but in a regular oven, um, you want to go oh Brody in a regular oven you want to cook these um, I think it was 275 degrees for three to five hours <laughs> I'm sorry buddy but you're gonna have to wait so I'll go ahead and pop these in the oven and I'm gonna check on them every hour or so give it a stir just to see how they're doing So since I'm working with beans today, yesterday I went and gathered a bunch of um, antique mason jars that used to belong to my grandmother. And um, I thought of some ideas that I can use them for because you can't can with them anymore. They're the old glass style antique mason jars. So you can store dry goods in them because the way they work is they have a glass lid and then this goes over top. So this here would just go on top of your jar and you can still, still seal it. So you can use them for dry goods. Um, so I went ahead and put a bunch of my beans and it's a combination of it looks pretty and um, it's also food. And it's out and not hidden away in a cupboard so I'll be more prone to use and actually make these beans that I've had sitting around for quite a while. Um, a couple other ideas that I've had with using the jars because I have a ton of them is I store some of my tea lights in them so 
Um, I have these are these are for emergency. So I have um, a pack of matches, and then I just have some tea lights. Um, another idea that I had was th storing something like a flower. So this was actually the very first flower Mike ever bought me 14 years ago, and. I thought, why not? I love mason jars. I love canning jars, all kinds. So why not um, make use of it? And it looks pretty and it just sits on a shelf and air doesn't get to it. So it also stays and holds even longer. Um, I also had an abundance of the glass lids. So I use them. I set glass lids around and I use them to house my tea lights. Um, another thing we did, I don't have it working right now, but I filled one with water and I want to get floating candles, but I put a tea light in it and I'll see if I can get it to, I got to get my one lighter. A floating candle so the only problem with tea lights is that water does get into them so I want to purchase some floating candles when we get to town because I just think especially at nighttime with the water and the glow it's super cute on top of housing the tea lights you can also buy like a pillar candle this one's done but just to show you for an example and that makes a perfect pillar holder so it's been about an hour, and I'm going to try to do this away from the lens. Oh, ho, 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 ho. this is my first time ever making these. So we'll be back in about another hour to check on these again. So it's actually been about three hours now because we had company come by. Oof. And they are looking like they are almost ready so my camera just died but um, I just tried a couple of the beans and they're still a little bit um, tougher than I'd like so I'm just going to add a little bit of water now this will evaporate out so I'm not worried about the flavor it's also very strong in flavor so um, but I'm going to give these one more hour and then they should be good. Okay, so they are, they are done like dinner. They smell good. I know the sauce tastes good. And now we're just going to serve it up over some rice. Mm. And Mike. <laughs> Super test dummy. Sue is going to give it a try. On duty. Oh, duty, duty. <laughs> Does it smell good? Mmm. That is really horrible. You should not have any. <laughs> <laughs> that is really delicious. Yeah? It was really delicious. All right, so I'll come. And over. just for a note, that's how you get served first. Sure, I'll, <laughs> I'll try it. I'll try. Okay, is it hot, hot, or what? Like it's kind of hot. Okay. Well, I I don't like that much. Okay. Mmm. Right? They are really good. Mmm. Like, really good. I love them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a fun day. <laughs> We've just had a really fun day, so. <laughs> but I still fed you. I'd be uh, concerned, but you took a bite too, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, 
You made me snort on camera. <laughs> uh, you should keep that. I might. <laughs>